Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by. Now you might have gathered this won't be a watch video, unfortunately. So I know there's going to be a few people turn off. But I've been out and I've bought a lathe. Now it's come with all of these other bits and bobs. I haven't got a clue what a lot of it is yet. But I'm sure we'll uh, find out in time. I think they were gravers, so they're what the tools you use. Now I've got a, a chuck there for, well, I've got two, for that tail stock, I think it's called. And they both fit. And I've got a, a little tray of collets. Now on the, the lathe already, there is a, a three jaw chuck I don't know what this is anybody knows let me know and again I think that's for pivots of some kind how it works again I don't know but I'll pick this up off eBay quite a good deal with it so what we're going to do is we are going to strip it down and clean it I'm not going to keep you in real time. I will fast forward through some of this. But I have. Currently, I've got about four watches in parts. I'm just waiting on bits. So hopefully, shortly after this video, it won't be too long before there is a watch video. But again, in the meantime, been playing with this lathe so we'll take it all apart we'll clean it up reassemble everything and then we'll see if it uh, works Absolute bargain with this. He was a lovely fella. He's even uh, thrown in a, a version bushing tool. So that might very well be an upcoming video, the restoration of that. But at the minute, I'm just kind of figuring what parts are. This is the on and off switch said we've stripped the actual lathe down as you can see that needs a bit of a clean there's some surface rust I did I wanted to replace the wiring on this before I actually tried it when it could very well be safe but I didn't want to take any chances. Good old electrical tape holding the wires together. Always reliable. But we will replace them. use an actual connection block instead of insulation tape put the motor to one side now I'm going to reuse this stand stroke set of drawers it's come on I think it'll be uh, ideal I'll be able to keep all those old tools in the two drawers what I'm just doing now is taking off those white wire 
cable management things. As you can see just there. This one's been a bit stubborn. We will give it a, a bit of a clean. Well, let's start on the lathe. And first of all, I'm just going to get a wire brush, take off what surface rust I can. Now, I do quite like doing things like this sometimes because there's no real thought involved. headphones in listen to some music and do a bit of manual work out comes the polishing wheel I'm going to use an old old wheel sort of a difference that's sort of made I'm going to need to use a bit of, a bit of sandpaper. It's about 800 grit sandpaper that is. And just to take some more of that surface rust. And then get it back on a polishing wheel. And what I'm looking to do is just remove all of this, the surface rust that I can. I don't want it rusting anymore. being the biggest part. Probably take the longest. As you can see that has made quite a bit of a difference. Again, the one thing we've got to consider is once this has been put back together, I'm going to have to learn how to use it. And my hope I'll be able to eventually re make replacement screws and balance staffs. And then ultimately, the main reason is I have got a, a couple of pocket watches which will need some re-pivoting doing. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do that. is the driving part of a lathe if you like I'm still not sure of what bits are called but that there is the rubber band that goes around the motor like I say it drives the lathe what we're going to do is just strip it down as much as we can clean it up and before putting it back together, we'll give it an oil. And just have a, an inspector things. Just so I know where bits go back. And these are just a split ring and come off. Polish everything up. And then with 
those bits clean, we can start to reassemble it again. is a little hole there that is I think your oil in point and then you've got the same on the back again we're literally just going to coat everything in a bit of oil do that too tight because that will stop it turning and then that second one is to lock it into place and there's a little grub screw on that we'll tighten that down everything's running freely what we like. There's a little spring that's just gone back in there. Now this bit is to lock it into place so you can adjust its position. two main parts of the lathe so we can get the I'm not sure what that part is called that's the like you know the main body of the the lathe we can put this stand on it so I think that screw has been made by somebody else in the past parts then we can this but I do not I'm sure it's called the tail stock so again we can clean this up use a bit of WD-40 there loosen a few bits That's penetrating things. We'll start taking other bits off. And this isn't coming out because of the rust on the other side. So I get a bit of sandpaper, give it a few turns, and then it should just come out. Start with the wire brush. Mm. 
Now the old wheels I was using give up the ghost. And the memory card run out of storage. But I was polished up and put back together, oiled. And then we can move on to the other parts. We've got the three jaw chuck. And then this part here is I think what your tools rest on. Again, I'm not sure of the, the technical name for it, but we've given it a polish. We've given all of the collets a polish, oiled everything up. And then the next job is to move on to the motor. Now, I don't know if the motor works or not, but we are all going to strip it down anyway, give it a clean, check the bushes in it, make sure there's no bare wires, I'll be a bit more confident about turning it on once I've seen with my own eyes. housings now I did google some new bushes for this but they're a weird size and I can't seem to find any so I ordered some that were slightly bigger and when they arrive I'm gonna have to grind them down to make them fit the bushes now the two connectors that attach to the bushes or the bushing housing just removing the earth wire and then we can take that out of the way those housings just pop out what I'll probably do is give them a little bit of a, a paint up the end caps these are little Copper washers, or brass washers, spacers. I'm just going to put them back on so I know where they, they belong. And there's some more. And that is the bearing. Persuasion to get off. There we are. Now, I've always been like this. I've always been fascinated with how things work. You know, as a kid, there, there was quite a few of my toys that were taken apart, and to be honest, never put back together. <laughs> always just to see how it worked. So once that's disassembled, I'm going to take off the old paint, use a bit of paint stripper. Now I 
wanted to get a bit creative with the old video and do a little time lapse bit of watching the, the paint thinners eat the paint. But uh, yeah, you'll see. That didn't work at all. But the thinners have worked on the paint, so I'm going to get them in the sink and then we'll rinse them off. Near the wife in the background. I do apologise. Yeah, she don't sound like that in real life. She has been sped up. And as you can see, they're clean now, ready for some fresh paint. I did this, it was warm outside, so please excuse the lack of t shirt. It was probably one of the hottest days we had. putting it back together As you can see everything's all clean it's all shiny I know it doesn't mean it's going to work but it certainly looks better taken the liberty of actually preempting this motor not working or breaking down in the near future and I've ordered a new one and you know, I was reading online and a lot of people said so machine motors and they're pretty cheap to be fair and I got one for about 30 quid so that is on its way Jeff's packing it and putting it in his van. And hopefully within seven to ten days, he should be dropping it at my house. out of the way. And now I'm fascinated to think that this motor is probably older than I am. Yeah, considerably. I've got a feeling it's from around the 50s. So I will forgive it if it doesn't work perfectly or at all in that matter. Apologies for the camera work. So some of this I was doing in the living room while the telly was on. It's uh, warm outside at the minute and my little shed is like an oven. But we are almost there. What I'm doing there is just reassembling the, the bushes. And I think you've got a bit fed up of seeing my arm and shoulder. So let's move on to the next bit. That's all reassembled and then we'll put it back onto this stand. Now I have made a bit of an error. I'm just thinking about cable management. Now if you remember when I took it apart those cables were at the front. That's why it doesn't matter, we'll put the cables at the back and change the polarity until it runs the right way. Mm. Now we have 
haven't put the hinge back on that block that was on there originally. Again, at this point, I had no idea what it was for. I didn't see any point to it, so I left it off. Again, once I realised what it was for, it did go back on. But I will get to that in a little while. But at the minute we're just screwing it down to its base and then we can wire it up. So again I'm just gonna pick a wire, put it in the hole for now. Like I say if it doesn't run the right way we'll uh, change the polarity of it. plug on I appreciate the work that goes into some of the restoration videos on YouTube because they must really think about it The problem is, once you've cleaned something, if you haven't got the right footage, you can't go back and make it dirty again. There you can see it's all back together. Everything's been cleaned. And again, I don't know what that's for. I don't even know what it's called. So anybody knows, please leave a comment. But it's now time to see if it works. That little bit there just needs an oil first. It's a bit stiff. So that I believe is what your tools rest on. It is still quite tight. I will end up getting a file to it. In the meantime, we'll see if it works. I've just got a bit of well, I don't know, metal there, rod. Found the right size, call it a bit. And then well, let's give it a whirl. And there, it's not doing anything. I think that's because the motor is running the wrong way. So we'll change the polarity of the wires. Because that's going to change the direction of the motor, right? puzzled me to be fair I'm no uh, electrician but I thought if you change the direction of electricity the motor direction would change but no it's still going the same way So I've had to swap the motor around, so just turn it around. And then now, that should run the right way. I'm gonna 
give it another go. There we go, that's better. However, very, very quickly, the motor started to get hot. But you can see there, look. I just need to learn how to use it now. to be doing what it should be doing. Now literally I'm not, I'm not making anything, I'm just having a go. what we shall do is we'll get it indoors but as you can see I'm having issues now so sometimes the motor will start sometimes it won't and then it will stop motor I got but as you can see there I've also put that hinge back on so as I, I mentioned the motor was getting very hot very quick and then I saw somewhere that somebody said just the weight of the motor on the belt is enough and then I had that light bulb moment where I thought ah that's what that hinge was for so I'll put a hinge back on And then just the, the motor's weight is enough to drive that belt. So I'm just going to take this original motor off. And then we'll attach the new sewing machine one. And it has come with a foot pedal. And I found that's quite hard to use. So I've gone ahead and I've done away with the actual foot pedal and I've used a dimmer light switch in order to be able to adjust the power. So I'm going to do is take off the bottom of the the cabinet bit. I'm going to put that under my desk because it's sitting too high above it, and my chair's not high enough. So it's a bit of a, a struggle to actually see what I'm doing. What we are going to do is get that new motor on there look as I say it came with a foot pedal you know I, I started with that I've had to extend the lead on it because it didn't quite reach but I found that a bit awkward so I did swap it out for a, a dimmer switch I didn't keep that in this video but you will see at the end so what I'm just doing now is attaching the motor to the the wooden block and we can plug it in you can see that's working there and let's try 
the drive in bad and in place. As you can see, it's, it's hard to keep a constant force going on that foot pedal. But it does work, so let's have a proper go. So as you can see there, I've mounted the drawers just below my desk. That allows me to be able to see properly. And we can get some tools out. Now, made these little dowels and go in the screw holes and that's just going to stop it moving around. Let's get some magnification on. What we're going to do is make a screw. We'd also like to thank everybody who's left a comment, as I always do. Normally, this is at the point of cleaning the watch movement, but obviously, there is no watch movement to clean, so I've popped it in here. Again, any questions, any requests, any answers to my questions, please leave a comment. is a bit wobbly there it's because it is attached to the desk and there's a bit of vibration going through so I'm just doing the screw head now so we've got the shaft we've got the screw head and then we just need to put a thread on there Take the belt out of the way and then I'll be cranking it by hand. Now I'm just going to bring the tail stock up behind it, keep it level and flat, and then just I'm going to give it a couple of turns and then go the opposite way. And literally, you can't do too many turns without going the other way and clearing out the channels. Ask me how I know. If you look closely at the number nine, you'll see I actually snapped a previous effort off in there. So just gently, gently, a couple of turns in, a couple of turns out, couple more turns in until you work your way right up the shaft and then we can take that away you can see it's created a thread a bit of uh, Rodico clean it up and we need to part it off I'm using this finished tool I found in one of the drawers it's be perfect for parting it off And next, we need to flatten it off. So I'm just going to use this polishing frog. What this does will flatten the top of that screw and keep it level. And then once we've got it flat, we need to put a, a slot in it for the screwdriver. Let's 
just have a little bit of a, a nub on the top so we'll just keep going and then once I'm satisfied it's flat enough I can put it in this little vise and cut a screw slot in it and then once that's done we can then polish it so what I'm using here is some 7000 grit paper on a level plate as you can see that's starting to polish it just keep going a little bit further and there we have it now just for laughs I'm actually I'm going to blue it I've never done that before either As you can see it's a, a working screw so we've just got some brass chippings and I'm heating it above a, an alcohol lamp now again sorry for the terrible footage I should have had it on the top there looking down in it I know for the next time but again thank you guys if you have enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and I will see you on the next one where we will have a watch.